I was asked for a tour of my bookshelf, so why the hell not? So what do we got here? One of many attempts to get back into art, fail, The Origin of Species, Stephen Inwood's History of London, which was massively useful when I was the lead storyteller for London in the Camarilla. Mythology, religion, British history, world history, some Dawkins, greatest show on earth there, Guns, Germs and Steel, much derided but a brilliant book, some stuff on Stonehenge. For someone who doesn't believe in a lot of nonsense, I certainly have a lot of books on it. Uh, so some classics, or at least some examination of classical such and such. Uh, that's one of my wife's on witchcraft. A copy of Poisoned, the infamous throat-raping pirates game. Some Celtic mythology. Dawkins classic, the God Delusion here. Dictionary of contemporary slang, good for looking up historical slang as well. Uh, so, useful tool for writing if you want to swear and fuck about. Clash of Civilizations Remaking of the New World Order, something that has been largely proven, I think, by what has been going on. Uh, Dan Dennett's classic Breaking the Spell, I think that's essential. He's about the only philosopher I have any respect for <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, General Ignorance, which is always good for a laugh, that was a uh, QI tie-in. Devil's Chaplain, which is Letters from Dawkins, those are good. An ancient Doctor Who novel. Uh, some Nietzsche, yeah, that should help my Nazi credentials, shouldn't it? Uh, Grey's Anatomy, which uh, I got for references and scanning for various things. Uh, the anniversary copy of Lord of the Rings. Brewers, rogues, villains, and eccentrics. Um, good inspiration for characters and history and stuff, you know, reading up on what people did in the past. The Hobbit, a classic children's book here of monsters and mysterious beasts. You can see what happened to me as a kid, really, can't you? Uh, a to Z of London. I mean, we've all got Google Maps now, but there's just, I don't know, something about looking at the maps. Stars and Planets, that was research for a science fiction game that never came out. Big Book of Vampires, a Thesaurus of obvious use, a Book on Fairies, again, reference, useful stuff for gaming type people. Uh, biographical Dictionary, uh, like the Book on Eccentrics, useful for looking up people and getting us kind of cliff notes and making yourself sound convincing when you talk about them. Critical Mass is a Really good book on how emergent complexity works. So if you want to understand that, I think you should you should do that. Uh, Turtle Dove, I'm a sucker for alternative history, even though he's not the best author. And back here, I've got some sort of old previous generation stuff um, about the future from the time, and you know there's some Sagan in there and and so on, sort of speculation about computers. It's interesting to look at what people thought would happen in the past. Dan, we're into some gaming stuff here, so Stormreach, which I worked on, uh, DreamPod 9's Heavy Gear, a much underrated game and system. I think I may have to retroclone the system <laughs> because I was in talks to use Silhouette for the next edition of Cloak of Steel because it's really good for scaling yeah, you can go from tabletop role-playing to full-on war game without missing a beat, really, um, with Silhouette. That's what's really useful about it. Uh, Rogue Trader, Dark Heresy. Don't like them as much as the old Warhammer Fantasy role-play. Uh, I think they missed a, missed a trick by kind of emulating D&D too much. Earth Dawn, I've... <laughs> Never even cracked open. Well, no, I've cracked it open and had a look at it. They were they were on bargain on sale from uh, Mongoose, I think, was selling it on. Yeah, yeah, MGP, yeah, Mongoose. See, I like the idea and the concept of Earth Dawn, but these books weren't especially well laid out, and I didn't think too much of them, to be honest. Mathematical science fiction puzzles. Some Lamentations of the Flame Princess up there, and... The best poetry book in the world, John Cooper Clark, our punk poet laureate. If you don't know who he is, look him up, you won't regret it. A bunch of flashmen, because who doesn't like a coward pretending to be a hero? More myths and legends and so on, some stray Richard Morgan, or analysis 
first kind of novel thing. That was that one was a bit of a disappointment because it was just kind of rehashing other stuff he'd done. Obviously, as a game designer, a coverless games of the world, which is full of all kinds of board games, and card games, and stuff from around the world. Big reference book on mythology and methods of divination. All bullshit, of course. Ancient Egypt, myth and history, and so on. Back down into the into the games. So space 1889, which I always liked. And back to the new one. Uh, Dust Adventures for Dust Tactics. I'm a bit of a Dust Tactics fanatic. It's a shame it's not really... Well, it is still going, but you, you have a hard time getting stuff for it and finding people to play with. Uh, Gamma World, that was the kind of their rehash of 4th edition, but I'm a bit of a sucker for box sets and got everything for that. It's fun, but we only played it once, so that was a bit of a waste of money. Uh, Five Rings, brilliant game, played that for years, loved it. Uh, SLA Industries, I was line developer on that incredibly briefly. Uh, Tales of Gargantir, a really good, weird game that never really went anywhere. I tried to get the rights for it, believe it or not, and um, what used to be a gaming company was now in real estate and legal advice, I think. <laughs> but they wanted to hold on to the rights, so uh, yeah, I couldn't do that. Some old cyberpunk and mage used to used to play cyberpunk to death. That was kind of the first properly mature game, I guess we went to. There's some oddities in here, like Tribe Eight and a, an obscure, diceless version of a Marvel game um, that never really went anywhere, but was in lots of bookshops. I picked it up because I'm curious about diceless games. Maybe I'll maybe I'll review some of these books on my channel. Just kind of talk about some of the more obscure and weird ones. Underground is a relatively obscure one, but it had really good rules for kind of um, changing the city and the environment around you by what you were doing. It was very much a game about social change without being pretentious and SJWE. Um, the mechanics in that for that are, are really good, and it's one of the better ways of handling superpowers I've seen in games. So, And it had some interesting ways of going about things. Uh, down below we've got some more heavy gear, Star Blazers, uh, which is brilliant, you should pick that up. The old good version of Warhammer, The Strange, which I haven't played yet, Cypher, I was thinking about releasing something on Cypher, but the license terms aren't particularly fantastic, and I haven't really figured out what I want to do with it yet. Uh, we've got some Fading Suns, Book of Unremitting Horror, with art by Dave Alsop, who is amazing. Central Casting, which was a bit of an inspiration for my 100 Seeds books, though you wouldn't know it. I'm thinking of doing a follow-up to the Seeds books for stuff for players, thinking that, you know, might do all right. Um, Gear Creek was kind of a precursor to Dust in a lot of ways, so it's sort of a diesel punky World War II. But the thing is, right, about DreamPod 9, they're, they're heavy gear franchise had fantastic art, anime style art, that really made it and made it work. But they went really kind of super gritty and realistic um, with Gear Creek, and it just doesn't... It doesn't sell the books. It doesn't work. It doesn't evoke that kind of pulp atmosphere in the way the art for Dust does. So that was a bit kind of... Uh, disappointing, I guess. Neverwhere, massively influential book, and of course I made the non-profit but approved game for that, and that was good. This is kind of my odds and sods <laughs> shelf, really. Odd little things I've picked up and considered and so on. Aberrant really handles uh, superpowers well, I think. Though we tried to play with a couple of people, but not everyone's so into the, the whole story thing, necessarily. Barbarians of Lemuria, good game, you should pick that up. We've got some Palladium down here, some Mega Traveller. Uh, Mechanical Dream, another one of those odd games, the weird premises that don't make a lot of sense and doesn't help that it was kind of written in Canadian French and poorly translated, making playing it a bit of a challenge. Some more Mage, love Mage, up until the Avatar Storm, fuck you Jess Heinig. 
Legends of Von Glare, that's kind of the fantasy version of Starblazer. Those are both worth picking up if you like fate and you like kind of extending fate into something more. Uh, Match Woman with Guns, which I've worked on. I've got the originals of those down here. Yes, the originals, little papery things, which I somehow managed to mangle into a game of some sort. Uh, Nightlife, which was kind of vampire before it was vampire, and uh, Brad McDevitt, who works with me a lot, was heavily involved in that. Again, I was pursuing the license for that for a while, but they uh, want far too much money for it. Crimson Skies, brilliant board game, brilliant world. I wish they'd do a role-playing game of Crimson Skies. I really, really do. Cannibal Sector 1, which I wrote, of course. 7TV, which is kind of um, a spy skirmish game. Uh, I bought that when I was selling Agents of Swing, actually, because I thought they might go together. Not managed to play it, but it's, um, it's a fun read, and if you like skirmish games, they've got some really good minis for that. Mars, I should probably sell, because that's one of Skarka's games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, laundry based on the novels, Cyberpunk 2020, best version, best rules, brilliant. After Man, now this is a fantastic art book and science book by Dougal Dixon, sort of speculating on how evolution might go in the future after mankind. I actually wrote to him to tell him what an amazing influence this book had been on me growing up and how I spent hours poring over it and imagining everything and he wrote me back and was was really lovely and nice about it uh hollow earth expedition haven't played yet but i'm a sucker for pulp stuff it's a bit weird actually lots of game designers are really into the pulps but a lot of players aren't <laughs> so often it's a it's a bit of a hard sell uh, what do we got down here uh, one ring travel new era much maligned but probably one of the better rule sets feng shui kind of dawn of the kind of stunt and full-on cinematic sort of mechanical replication of, of films. That was good. Savage World. Never got on with it very well, though uh, I did get on with Deadlands and their post-apocalyptic one. There's just something about Savage Worlds I just can't, can't get on with. Uh, what else we got down here is of interest. All my SLA Industries references. Titan. Yeah, I started on I started on fighting fantasies, so you know, any fighting fantasy book, Out of the Pit, Titan, all of that, that's all, you know, that's all really good for me. And then over here we have my kind of reading and reference thing. This is where I put most of the books that I've worked on, or stuff that I'm reading or intending to read, or referencing, or stuff I'm just wedging down to get it out of the way. So yeah, there's a lot of recognisable stuff there. Call of Cthulhu, love that game. An old minis game, Cryomech, which a 2000 AD artist illustrated, so that was good. Pathfinder, useful for reference. Uh, honestly, I can't remember half the stuff I've got down here. Oh my god, I actually bought a copy of Rift with the Palladium rules. What was wrong with me? <laughs> oh, here we go. The old paperback Dragon Warriors from the mid 80s. Now this was a really accessible format that I wish people would go back to. Maybe I should do like an homage game of some kind and publish it in that kind of paper, handy paperback format. You had like a series of books, like the first one was um, Barbarians and Knights and then you had Sorcerers and Mystics and then you had Assassins and, and you just, you know, it kind of expanded the rules in an intuitive and interesting way through through each one. It's been been republished since, but there's just something about the old paperbacks that's just really, really good. So through here, a few old minis, a lot of old Crimson Skies clicks, which I just used for playing the regular board game. Some Iron Kingdom stuff, and an Ancient Dragon. I think that was a Citadel one. I don't know, that, that blue came out really well on it for some reason. And a wall of board games. And card games and other odd bits and pieces. And there is yet another bookcase in the bedroom. So we've got some Peter F. Hamilton. Definitely always worth a read. Some predictable gaming. Aberat, 
some of the only good stuff that Clive Parker has done since he publicly came out as gay, in my opinion. And they're supposedly children's books, but they get pretty, pretty dark. But yeah, they're, they're good. Uh, Douglas Adams, of course. Bill Bryson, always worth a read. His kind of travelogues and stuff. He's an American living in Britain, so if you want to get to know Britain from an American perspective with a bit of humour, he's, he's a good read. Uh, let's see, what else have we got here? Oh, you know, all kinds of stuff, really. And then my wife keeps all her current reads on the side of the bed. Cory Doctorow, mmm, one does not approve. <laughs> But yeah, Richard Morgan, so that's okay. Uh, the hallway shelf is mostly my wife's, but there's a few of mine in here, here and there. Ghostwoods uh, did Cthulhu Lives, and I've worked with them on a couple of things in the past. That's one I contributed to, under my own name for once, Erotic Romance and Domination. That was a really good story, actually. I'm glad it made it in. So got some... Uh, Larry Correa there, and we've got some old pulp classics here somewhere. Yeah, Raymond Chandler, there we go. All sorts. Uh, I am well behind on my reading because after reading every single Gore novel, one after another, and making notes, I just wasn't <laughs> into reading <laughs> anymore. I'm gradually getting back into it, but it just, uh, it was too much. I broke my brain completely. Ah, uh, a whole bunch of Heinlein. Who doesn't love Heinlein? Well, we know who doesn't love Heinlein, but in this house, we love Heinlein. And some classic William Gibson there. Neuromancer and so on. And a difference engine. Right, this is how steampunk should be. If you like steampunk, read this. Nothing else, just this. Hidden away in the cupboard under the attic my vast collection of dust which I never get to play with and was ironically gathering dust. You're beginning to gather how much we like books yet. Hello Nikki. <laughs> so yeah cookbooks. My wife likes to collect old ones. We've got Mrs Beaton and a whole bunch of other stuff, cuisines from around the world and all the rest. So yeah, cookbooks too. We we like books. Brief hello to the Charlie Cat. You should not be licking plates. Say sorry. <laughs> Doesn't give a single solitary fuck. So yeah, here we go. Next bookcase. DVDs. And a whole bunch of books. So stuff from friends, people we've backed on various things. Ian e M. Banks, of course. Joe Abercrombie, good series of books. Uh, unconventional fantasy. I am not a huge fan of fantasy, but his books, very good. As are Richard Morgan's fantasy-ish books. So Cold Commands and so on. Those, those are good. More Aberat, which I've mentioned. Peter F. Hamilton, they're always worth a read. More Flashman. Yeah, we need to get a bit more organised, I guess. Lovecraft, complete Conan. Brilliant investment, well worth it. Uh, Scott Lynch's books, while he's very slow to write them, those are also worth looking at as well. Uh, you may remember The Amber Spyglass, Subtle Knife and, and so on. Um, People thought it was going to kind of rival Harry Potter and ended up not really, which is unfortunate, but they kind of lost me towards the end, to be honest, and maybe that's why. Lensman, who doesn't like Lensman? If you've not read Lensman, classic space opera going back to the 1930s, but just brilliant. I've been collecting 2000 AD since I was like three, so <laughs> this is all the annuals that they don't do anymore and the yearbooks and so on, some of our game reference manuals. Action kind of predated 2000 AD and was a lot more violent, but that was before my time, <laughs> so I had to buy the collection on that. Yeah, and some more reference books and stuff here that I'm currently using. Our collection of Fraser Irving stuff. Storming Heaven was the only story I was really interested in here. It's this 
idea that um, hallucinogenic, specifically LSD, could awaken superheroic powers in people. This came out right when I was developing a superhero game on exactly the same lines, and I was so, so fucking pissed. <laughs> but it's a really good story. Bunch of crap. On to the next bookcase. These ones are mostly my wife's, but there's some odd stuff here and there. Jim Butcher I never really got into particularly. I know a lot of people like him, but it's just not for me. Stross is good. What have we got behind Ludo? Smell bad. Halting State, that was good. I liked that one quite a lot. Jasper Ford. Uh, I expect a lot of you haven't heard of Jasper Ford. He doesn't seem to appear in the science fiction or the fantasy sections, but what he writes is kind of really weird, really British <laughs> fiction. Uh, they, they adapted The Last Dragon Slayer um, on Sky recently, and I think that's the first a lot of people will have heard of him, but go and check out his stuff, especially the Thursday Next novels. They're just really good. Now we're down into graphic novels. We've got some classic TMNT there. Albion, if you like old British comics, that's almost as worth reading as Zenith is in a lot of ways. Battle of Halo Jones, a uh, sort of biography, record of Alan Moore's work. I mean, you can't ignore Alan Moore. He knows the score. A uh, bunch of manga behind all these toys and things. There's Bagpuss, an inspiration to me, I can tell you. Neil Stevenson, I like. China Mayville, definitely like, though bit hit and miss sometimes, I guess. Um, wish they'd made Embassy Town into a film instead of that time-travelling language film that they did. Our uh, Fallout case, okay, which is full of bottle caps and quite heavy. More graphic novels. Luther Arkwright, brilliant. Absolutely amazing. Got Freak Angels. There's a lot of Warren Ellis stuff here. <laughs> we like Warren. Very much. Transmet Planetary, which is one of my favourite, one of my favourite series of all time in comic books. Why the Last Man? We only need to finish picking up the rest of those. We've got the complete series of The Boys, which I like because it just kind of undermines superheroic tropes in a similar way to the way martial law did, but even more brutal, <laughs> if anything, I suppose. And we had an addiction for Absolute for a while. So Absolute Planetary was a must. Absolute Authority for the first two or three series. That was an absolute must. Got some fantasy art books back there as well. Some Hellblazer, all sorts. And we don't have room for everything. So underneath the cat, you can see some more fantasy art novels. Now this was an important book for me. The Encyclopedia of Science Fiction, um, really key and influential, brilliant resource. I mean, massively out of date now. I don't even know when I bought it, but for the kind of history of science fiction, very good. Um, and another two very important books, if you want to understand me. Galactic Tours, a collection of fantasy art kind of pretending they're offering tours of other worlds and so on. Just the art always fired my imagination. And equally, Great Space Battles and its other sort of Terran Trade Authority books, which collected a bunch of art by people like Chris Foss and so on and spun a narrative around it. But just being able to see these, these covers printed up large and, yeah, amazing. There is an RPG of Great Space Battles and the TTA stuff, so... System's okay. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd look that up if you're interested. Um, but really getting the original books, if you can. You can sometimes still find them in charity shops. That's, that's where you need to go. And finally, most of this bookcase is stuff I kind of inherited from my dad, I guess. When he moved out, I kind of acquired all his old science fiction novels. There's a lot of those. Here, classics like Philip K. Dick, yeah, some uh, some old Arthur C. Clarke and so on, all you know, really good, really influential, interesting, interesting stuff. 
I mean, we're two, three books deep in some of these. There's some Heinlein again. More Lensman. You know, some other stuff here, some old Terry Pratchett. Dragon 4, which were children's science fiction books, quite influential when I was young. You know, I tried Kevin J. Anderson's take on June because I wanted to know more about June, but not really up to the task, I don't think, particularly. God love him. Uh, some classic reprints, like Hartman the Anarchist. I'm a sucker for aerial bastards, <laughs> which is basically what that is. Uh, what else we got down here? The collections of Wells, more China Mayville, Rail Sea, Week Ending, brilliant world, build, world building. So, yeah, and some tie in novels kind of relegated back here when nobody can look at them. <gasps> and the Gorean Shelf of Shame. 